Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today I want to do a short video to talk about um, a very nice puzzle event that's actually going on at the moment. Uh, it's by a puzzle creator called Daniel Peake, uh, so there's his website uh, on screen at the moment, and essentially it's in the form of an advent calendar. So each day uh, Dan's releasing uh, a puzzle, and uh, so there's going to be 25 of them all together, and there's a, there's a meta as well, so all of the puzzles are linked somehow. And I have to say, Mark and I have been both been doing um, the puzzles every day, and they are of a very, very high standard. They're very entertaining. I'm going to share one with you uh, in a moment, um, but just to show you the sorts of things that are involved, um, if we go and have a look at the puzzle from day one. There we go. If we have a look at the puzzle from day one, you, could, you should uh, see that looks like a Sudoku in some form or another. So... Um, the idea, as you can see, there's some words around the grid. I think they're involved for the meta. And you have to turn this central uh, puzzle here into a seven-letter word. That's what this number in the bottom left-hand corner is telling you to do. So do have a look at this. I'll put the, um, I'll put the links uh, under the video so that you can, you can find it on the internet. Very, very worthwhile. And there was one puzzle that I looked at uh, just the other day from this series, which I thought was just wonderful. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, Dan's kindly given me permission to actually show you how to solve it. So here's the puzzle that I'm going to show you. Now it's called Building Bridges. And uh, you'll see there's a series of circles there with different numbers in them. And we've got to turn this somehow into a four-letter word. Now, those of you who follow the channel and who are puzzle enthusiasts may look at this and immediately recognise it as a sort of puzzle called a hashi, uh, or a bridges puzzle it's sometimes known as, known as in the West. And it has a, a couple of simple rules. So basically the idea is that we have to connect all of these circles together, and each circle will have um, a number of lines going to other circles equal so the number of lines will equal the number in the, in the box. So let's actually go to an example and see how to do this. So here's the puzzle. And the easiest place to start with one of these is the corners normally, especially if they've got the number four in, because each circle can only have a maximum of two lines extending from it. So this four square in the corner it is forced in effect. Similarly down here, we can, we can fill that in. So now this five circle cannot go any, we can't put a third line in, so we can only extend one up from this five. Um, now, do have a look at the puzzle, pause it if you need to in order to think about how to make progress, but typically the thing that gets tricky with a hashi puzzle is ensuring that you don't isolate any of the areas. So what we need to do is make sure that in the end all of these uh, all of these circles are connected in a single structure. So this six here, obviously that, that's forced, that's going to have to do that. What now? This four is forced, it has to come like this. And now we can look at circles like this number two. Now although this number two could go one in this direction, it can't go two in this direction. So we know that there'll be at least one number coming down like that. And let's think about this three square now, or three circle. I was too used to doing Sudoku. Now, if the three square did this, you can see we've isolated the three, the two, and the one in a single self-contained unit, not connected to the other unit. So we know that's going to be impossible. So what can we tell from that? Well, we can tell that this is going to have to extend one down like that. So let's carry on. And again, we can think about the same arrangement, this 1, 3, 2 arrangement here, we've got the same problem. We can't end up with this arrangement because, again, isolation. So if we know that that isn't possible, how do we avoid that? Well, the only way is going to be if this one comes down here and it extends both ways like that. This is the only way this gives this opportunity for this collection of cells to extend further outwards. This two, it can go one this way, but only one, so we can definitely fill in uh, one line here. The three here, we still need to extend two lines from this three, because it's only got one connecting at the moment. So although one could go this way, only one, so we can, we can write in another line in that way. 
And this is the sort of position where you have to get quite um, logical about how to make progress. And the best way to think about this is to look at um, circles like this number two here. Now, this number two can reach a series of one cells in three directions. You can see this circle, this circle, and this circle. So what does that mean? Well, if you think about it, once a bridge hits a one cell, the path finishes there. So we know that if we want to extend this structure that's going around the bottom part of the grid here, it's never going to be possible to do it through this two cell, because this two cell cannot, will hit dead ends as soon as it moves. Similarly with the three, the three either goes to the two, hits dead ends thereafter, or goes to this one and hits dead ends. So let's have a look at how we might be able to extend the puzzle and make sure that we connect this top part of the puzzle to the bottom part of the puzzle. Um, now this three cell is very interesting because if this three goes across like this you can see it hits a dead end. Similarly this two if it extends oops sorry if it extends I don't know quite how this uh, software works there you go if this two goes this way it hits a dead end. So we know that however we extend uh, these cells that we've been looking at from the middle and the left hand side, we're not able to get into this part of the, of the structure. So if we follow this chain round, how are we going to reach that side of the grid? It's only going to be through this three. This is the only way that we can, we can get up here. Obviously if the three connects to the one, that's a dead end again. So in fact we know it must connect to the two. And that's probably the critical step that you need to appreciate to solve the puzzle. This one now can only go in this direction. This three now is forced to be here. This one can only reach this cell. This one can only reach this cell. Again, we know from the earlier logic, if we extend this two in this direction, although we'll be able to reach this T structure here, we will never get back to this structure. So this two will have to go upwards. Um, if this two comes down, we've isolated it, so it can't do that. It's going to have to come across. And there we go. And there we go. We've done the whole puzzle now. Um, and you may be saying, well, yeah, OK, you've done the puzzle. But what's? how do we get a four-letter word from this? Because remember, we have to turn this, this puzzle was called Building Bridges. There it is on the screen there we have to turn this into a four-letter word. So definitely have a pause of the video and see if you can see a four-letter word here. I'm going to add some highlighting to make it clearer. But this, I thought, was just absolutely fantastic. Because what Dan's done with this puzzle is he's... Every line, that, every bridge, if you like, that's two lines long, we can re effectively remove. And if we do that, we're actually left with four single lined letters, a J at the top here, this E, this F, and this F. And you may say, well, Jeff, what's that got to do with anything? Well, we've built the bridge, Jeff Bridges. Absolutely fantastic. Um, very witty, beautiful use of a classic logical type, and a very good puzzle as well. So, as I say, I'm really enjoying these. They come out every day uh, over the Christmas period. Thanks to Dan for creating them. They must have taken so much work. Um, he deserves a lot of credit, and uh, I'd really commend them to any of you who want to, uh, who enjoy good puzzles. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content here, please do subscribe to the channel. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.